The second successful colony that English created here in the New World is called the Plymouth Colony. In 1620, 40 pilgrims, or also known as the Saints, and 62 other English sailors, or called the Strangers, uh, sailed to the New World on the Mayflower. They were headed for Virginia, but they got blown off course and they landed really far to the north. They even landed out of the control, the land controlled by the Virginia Company. So they created a plan for running their colony. And that should send off some bells and whistles in your mind. If the Virginia Company cannot control them and control that area, they need to figure out a way to legally run their colony. And the legal, initial legal permission to run their colony came in a charter that said, you're going to listen to the London Company. So anyway, the Plymouth Colony had to figure out a way to run their government and run their colony. Take a look at this picture. You can see where they were headed over on the left. They were supposed to be in Virginia, but instead they landed here in uh, up near present-day Massachusetts. They settled their colony here in Plymouth, which is north of Boston, and it's inland. It's not way out here on Cape Cod. The pilgrims sailed in their ship called the Mayflower, and inside the Mayflower was a rather small ship. Uh, the conditions were cold, wet, cramped, awful, nasty, but nobody died. So that's good to know. And in fact, I believe somebody was even born on the ship. Uh, so the Mayflower landed in Plymouth on December 21st, 1620. Now before they got off the ship, all of the colonists came up with what is called the Mayflower Compact. It was a document created and signed by the pilgrims and other colonists aboard the Mayflower, and it was used to make laws for the benefit of the whole colony. The document, the Mayflower Compact, it kept all the colonists together because the strangers, the 62 other people, the other English, they didn't really want to hang out with the pilgrims, who were religious fanatics for their time. Um, they didn't want to be with them, and the the, the uh, pilgrims were worried that if the strangers left, well, 40 people can die a lot faster than 102. So they wanted to stick together, so they wrote the Mayflower Compact. And I may make another video about this, but what it is, is it represents self-government the pilgrims realized that they were too far away to depend on the government back in England. And they were out of the area of the Virginia Company, so they couldn't. They were too far away from them as well. So they had to come up with a way to control themselves. They had to handle their own affairs. And we'll talk about this in class, and it's, again, another example of self-government, much like Virginia and Jamestown's House of Burgesses. Here's a picture of the, of the um, pilgrims signing the Mayflower Compact. They were binding themselves to this document and to the idea that they would stick together and that they would make their own rules to be successful. Now, when the pilgrims arrived in December of 1620, they arrived to a climate which is similar just to ours. I mean, you know what it's like over in Massachusetts in December. It's cold, there's snow, you can't plant anything. So um, in the first winter, half of the people died. Right away, half died. In the spring, local Wampanoag Indians, and two of them that came to help were Samoset and Squanto, they helped the pilgrims plant crops and trap animals. They tried to help them survive. After the first harvest, the pilgrims celebrated their survival by holding a Thanksgiving feast with Native Americans. And that's the root of our, our present-day Thanksgiving celebration. Um, you're going to see these documents again in the top right. You see how the Native Americans helped the Plymouth Colony. Basically, so many died in the first winter that the pilgrims were on the verge of giving up, heading home, or all just dying themselves. And so with the help of Samoset and Squanto they, and other natives, they were able to grow, good, grow enough crops to survive. Now, things didn't get much easier for the pilgrims. They continued to suffer a lot of casualties, and, um, but they slowly began to strengthen their, their colony. More people arrived, and they were able to survive. The pilgrims, now let's talk about their religious views. They were separatists. 
and separatists as a form of Christianity, but they were separating from the Church of England. And they didn't like the way that the Church of England was being run, and they wanted to be able to worship freely. So they were trying to get away from the king and his religion. And um, the king, at the same time, was trying to get them out of England so that they could get away from ruining his church. So they came to the New World in order to worship God the way that they wanted to, without being told how to worship by the English government. They came for religious freedom. And religious freedom is going to be the one of the two main reasons why people came here for colonizing. Num- reason number one is to make money. Reason number two, for religious freedom. They wanted to worship how they wanted and not how the king wanted. 